right now, there is a city where thousands of people have no access to running water, and hundreds of thousands could yet lose it. Now, I'm not talking about Iraq, Syria, or any war-torn country. While there is war, a war going on in this place, it's not fought with bombs or guns. It's fought by politicians and corporations. I'm talking about the once proud city of Detroit, where nearly 150,000 residents, mostly poor people and minorities, are facing shutoffs for the inability to pay a water bill whose costs they've seen rise 119% over the past decade. Now, these shutoffs could potentially impact up to 300,000 Detroiters who have been late on their water bills for over two months. Now, the rationale for these shutoffs is that the water department needs to recoup lo a massive losses from non-payment from these delinquent accounts and these citizens whom half belong to the African-American community. Now, many of these people uh, have been visited by contractors paid to turn off their water lines. Now, it's no surprise that, to hear that Detroit is in massive financial trouble. That's, of course, due to many different factors like mismanagement, corruption, white flight, reduced tax revenue, outsourcing, unemployment, and poverty, and other factors. So it would make fiscal sense to many people that in order to recruit some of those losses, the government has to get money back where it can. But it isn't. And I'll explain why. Because when you look deeper into the situation, you'll notice something incredible. Now, according to an article in The Guardian, a high-end golf clubs, sports stadiums like the Red Wing Stadium and Ford Football Field, and more than half of the city's commercial and industrial users also owe a large portion of that water bill, about $30 million in total. Now, one of the complaints by residents is that the water department is prioritizing businesses and allowing them more leeway and targeting residents for shutoffs first. Now, the water department actually disputes that claim and says it plans to report the number of business clients that have lost water access, but gave no specifics or no specific timetable to releasing that data other than soon. Now, the Detroit News reported that businesses on average owed more and were much more delinquent on their bills, owing on average $7,700 per business, while the average residential user owed only about $600. Documents also show that non-residential clients make up almost half of what the water department is owed, despite them being less than 7% of total delinquencies. Now, it's obvious that, the, that some of these businesses use a lot more water than residences, but 7% of delinquent business accounts make up nearly half of what's owed to the water department. Nearly half. And yet they're sending out people to shut off the residents' water first? No, 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 let's not go after the businesses. Let's go after the people. Who the fuck cares about the people? Let's go after the masses. The whole reason the water department is trying to settle these accounts is because Detroit is in the middle of bankruptcy. That's right. And, it's, and, and this bankruptcy is led by an un, unelected bureaucrat appointed by Rick Snyder. Against the wishes of our state, by the way, because remember, Michigan voters, and I was one of them, rejected the emergency manager law that allows this guy to be in power, Kevin Orr. But Snyder passed it over again, overnight, by the way. Under the cover of darkness, he passed another emergency manager law. And now he's using that power to privatize Detroit, starting with the water system. Cut off in collections business is to make the water department more attractive to private investors. And that's the plan. Usurp democracy to privatize public assets using debt as an excuse. Debt caused by rising prices above what people can afford alongside a massive increase in poverty. And you know what? Too many people are okay with what's happening in Detroit. They deserve it, right? Because they're all poor. They're lazy. They don't work. They're all lazy black people with their welfare. Why should we help them? It's amazing how, how we're actually okay with shutting off these people's water. Mm-hmm. And you know what? 
All the towns that have been taken over by these so-called emergency managers are towns with the majority African-American populations. Flint, Pontiac, Allen Park, Benton Harbor. These are all poor areas that have been hit hard by the problems, the economic problems going on in Michigan with the loss of our auto industry. And they, these people have a lack of opportunity and are easy, easy targets for privatization. It's gotten so bad in Detroit with these shutoffs that residents have actually petitioned the United Nations for help. The UN has responded that if these shutoffs continue for people that can prove that they have no ability to pay these bills, that, Ameri that, that this city would be in violation of basic human rights the right to water. So here we are, richest country in the world. We've got military bases everywhere. We're the, we have the home, we're the home of the most millionaires worldwide. We have the largest economy. And we cannot even guarantee running water for the poorest among us. Detroit's becoming a third world country even in our own borders. And look, if we let them privatize Detroit, it's over. They've already killed democracy in Michigan. Who's next? Will they start appointing emergency managers in other states? How about entire states that are fiscally insolvent? Oh, I forgot. A lot of those high deficit states are red states. Now we can't do that. Those are proud Republican states. Fiscally responsible and filled with freedom. But if you're black and you're from the inner city and you're poor, then obviously you're not allowed the right to self-governance. It's fucking grotesque. Sean, t take over. I'm, I'm pissed. Well, I mean, there's, there's, like, I can understand why, theoretically, you want to shut, you have to shut people's water off in order to get them to pay, right? A lot of times... O o only, only, if they, only if they have the means to pay. No, but I'm saying a lot of times... They have the means to pay and they choose not to. That's the only time it's acceptable. If, this, if they have the means to pay it and they don't, I can see that there's, you can make an exception and say, okay, we're going to give you a warning. You better start paying. But if you can't afford it and you can prove that you can't afford it, there, just like these people in Detroit, there is no, there's no way that you should be able to shut off their water. It's, it's common human decency right. but, to say, but, look, we're going to uh, provide water to people who can't afford it. I, I, I get I, I get what you're saying, but like I can understand like you know, and some people and I guarantee some people will pay at the moment when they come to shut it off. Like that's just how a lot of people work, and I got that. But if you have a bunch of people that you're gonna put without water, like the amount of damage that you're gonna do to your city is far beyond what the delinquent water bills uh, do. And like the idea that you you mentioned the um. The stadiums not paying their bill. I mean, yeah. that could it does. I don't, I don't know how we we don't know exactly how past due they are. We just know the amount that they owe. But you assume that a gigantic stadium uses a shit ton of water, so it could they be absolutely do. Yeah, so it could be they're not that far behind compared to like the months that the average person is. Like that that could be that could be an issue. We don't we don't know that. But that's not the most insulting thing about this. Emergency manager is appointed by the governor, right? And he's the one who wants the water um, utility to go collect all these bills. How much is the lease to pump water out of the rivers leading into the Great Lakes of Michigan? Do you know? No, I, I don't know the, the numbers offhand, no. So the Nestle Corporation makes billions of dollars pumping your water out of your state. And they pay the state of Michigan about $99 a year for their annual lease. So they're giving water away, essentially, to Nestle for them to sell at, at a price that's more than gasoline is by the gallon. And oh, at the oh same and, here's that, and here's the thing about Nestle, too. Nestle, if you can remember, CEO of Nestle says, water is not a human right. Water is our right to sell. So, so essentially, they're taking the water, getting almost free water from Detroit, from the Great Lakes. And then they're selling it back to the people at an inflated price. And on top of that, they, say, they tell you that 
No, that's not your water. You don't have a right to water. This isn't your water. This is our water, and we're going to gouge you for it. And if you can't pay it, tough fucking luck. Tough cookies. That's our water. And by the way, it's totally what he's what what that thing is doing is an end around the the law. It's actually illegal to pump the Great Lakes of Michigan for water, but they they found a loophole and they're pumping the rivers that feed the Great Lakes of Michigan. So the fact that they're giving water away to a multinational corporation who a few years ago was the most profitable corporation in terms of scale and all factors controlled, and at the same time you're spitting on the people that live there, like you have. This isn't Las Vegas, right? Like, this isn't Vegas right. where you have a very limited water supply and it costs a shit ton of money to bring that water in and then serve it to the people. And then if some asshole is running a 3,000-foot fountain and not paying for it, like, you, you go shut his ass off to teach him a lesson. Like, this is Michigan. This is, this is one of the largest freshwater reserves in the entire world, definitely in the country. And you're going to give water away on one end, and I say give water away because literally a hundred, uh, if a bottle of water costs a dollar, then they have to sell a hundred of them to make up their annual cost for the lease that they pay. So they're giving water away at the same time they're taking water away from poor people. And I understand that they don't pay, and I understand you've got to try and collect that money, you got to work out payment plans, and I understand that people are assholes. And they like to stiff their utility companies. I understand all those things are true, but when right, you but, but what's also true is is the increase in price of water over the last decade that that pretty much has doubled, you know, especially in one of the times of where people have had the hardest economic time. I live in Michigan. Okay, Detroit's like two hours away from me. All right, so I have seen firsthand. I've lived here pretty much my entire life, and I've seen firsthand the economic issues that, that have happened in Michigan. We have been, I mean, we were bad off before the crash in 2008. We've been bad off for a long time, and now they made it even worse. Yeah, and part of, the, part of the reason that you're paying more for water is because Nestle is taking as much as they can get. Like, of course. So that's decreasing the supply, but... Like the thing is, is water from the tap in general is not is not that expensive. I actually have a, a unique perspective. I rent and actually don't pay for water. Like I pay for heat and electricity, but I don't pay for cold water. So, um, like, but it's it's not that expensive when you break it down. Like if you compare the price of tap water to bottled water, it's not that expensive. But over time, it builds up, and like, like it just it just seems it it seems unbelievably cool. Like, if you had low rates yeah. and you were being stiffed by people and you really needed that money and you wanted, and you had to shut down some people in order to get them to pay, then that makes total sense. But... But that's not what's happening. Yeah, you're giving away water, and you what you have to look at is how soon after people get their water shut off do they pay the bill. Because if it's, like, eight hours, then that means that was some guy trying to stiff you. If it's months, then maybe the, they really can't pay that. And the thing is, it's also the summer, and that seems unnecessarily more cruel because it's getting hot, and it, it just doesn't. It's like shutting off people's heat in the winter, which I'm, actually they did that this year. They they actually did that in the winter of 2013. They did that, shut off people's heat, thousands of people. Yeah, that's that's actually not legal in my state. Like you can't shut down people's yeah. heat, uh, uh, electricity. Well, well we have a we have a Republican legislature here, both the state. Uh, the, the the state congress, right, the house and senate, governor. and the governorship are all red. But I'm actually I'm actually pretty certain that it's not legal where you are. But the emergency manager can override certain laws yeah. to emergency. And that's manage. what I'm talking about. Like he's an he's an he's emer he's an emergency dictator is what right. I'm trying to say. And that you know, like people the people in Detroit and in Benton Harbor and Allen Park, all these people. They're majority black, and they've lost their democracy by being having to be ruled over by these undemocratically elected emergency managers, and that's incredibly fucked up. And just the just the hypocrisy. I just want to repeat it again: ninety nine dollars for to to take your your water. Nestle pays, and these people are getting their stuff shut off. Yeah, it, look, man. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen in this situation, but man, if they, if they privatize 
the water, and if they continue to sell off pieces of Detroit in order to pay, you know, uh, to to pay off their debts and deficits, it's fucking over, dude. Like Detroit is is Detroit's already destroyed, and then now it's going to be even worse if the corporations take full control of it. And that's what's happening in my state. And it's just it's how do you fight against that, man? 